Hi guys, hope you're all doing well. I just wanted to do a quick market update on a few of the key markets that I'm watching at the moment and what I want them to do over the next couple of weeks as we head through April. Um, I've got the S&P 500 chart up here at the, at the moment and I will be looking at that as one of the key markets I'm looking, which actually could be trading uh, at the open, which we're very, very close to getting to, but I'll cover that in a second. Um, I actually want to start in FX. I want to start with the dollar index. Um, before I get into the charts themselves, I want to look at the seasonal patterns. And just to cover off at the, at the start, I do get this uh, quite regularly, this question asked about seasonal patterns and what's going on in the world. Uh, at the moment we have the war in Ukraine, etc. And then the last couple of years we've had the pandemic, etc. And I'm always asked the question about uh, how can we follow it? Or why would you look at a seasonal pattern when you've got a war on or a pandemic on? or a recession on or whatever it happens to be there's always something going on in the world and the simple answer is is do you never assume there's a seasonal pattern you look at what the market is doing you look at the seasonal pattern if we're following the seasonal pattern we're following the seasonal pattern regardless of what's going on so the key thing for me is when i'm looking at to trade i'm looking at charts i'm not looking at the news to read what's happened in the world today i'm looking at the charts to see what the charts are doing and there are a number of very very key major markets at the moment that are following seasonal patterns and if they are doing that then i will use a seasonal pattern to give me a, a heads up of what they're going to try to do again in the, in the near future we won't always follow the seasonal pattern but whilst we are following it I will use that to help me plan ahead and if we look here to start with with uh, the heat map that we have here on the website we're looking at the percentage change the uh, historical percentage change per month uh, or by month and you'll see there's a big divide typically going from march and april this tends to be a period uh, in the year we do see quite significant change across a lot of markets is probably the, it's the biggest difference you see between the, the months across the year uh, a lot of markets go from red to green a lot of the currencies at the top here go from red to, to green uh, Equities tend to have a very, very strong performance in April as well, but we'll, we'll touch on this in a second. The uh, numbers that you see here are derived from a weighted average seasonal pattern that we we have, at our, have on our website. Uh, what we're gonna actually be looking at uh, now is actually the presidential cycle. So just to, uh, to explain, so the, the yellow line is the weighted average, and that's what the numbers are on that table I just looked at. Um, but we there's the historical line, which is the blue line, and the purple line on these charts, specifically the election cycles, perfect. Uh, the purple line is how that market has performed during the current election cycle, which this year is the midterms, US midterms. And interestingly, there are a, com a couple of markets, the dollar index is, is one of them, that is following uh, very closely aligned with its election pattern at the moment. We've seen the weakness at the beginning of, of January and then a strong per performance through into February, really strong performance. Uh, we didn't have much of a dip in March. Uh, we did dip at the, at the beginning, but it actually more consolidated, which is showing an outperformance for the dollar against its seasonal pattern. Uh, and we run into a peak, to, peak towards the end of March and in early, early uh, April, which we're now at, and we're now looking at this period here at a potential period of weakness for the dollar. It's typically one of the most consistent periods for the dollar uh, in terms of its pa patterns. And it does uh, usually signify that we're gonna to expect to see weakness. If we look at where we are in the chart though, we've had the FOMC last night. Uh, so we've got those minutes out of the, out of the way. And we had a nice push uh, higher initially, but we've stalled for us since then. Uh, where the dollar sits at the moment to me looks like a field breakout and it's quite common as well run into that uh, to a turn that it do does that particularly around the FOMC meeting um, I would quite like to be short this now look at the seasonal pattern that we just have seen it suggests weakness through a April and then actually does quite well in May uh, it has performed very well um, and it's outperformed at seasonal period so we may not see an awful lot of downside we may just come back into this range and range through this area and actually continue to push really strongly into to May but what the seasonal pattern is suggesting certainly uh, is the wise we may not see a market just turn around and collapse like that I uh, wouldn't be expecting that it does suggest that upside from here is going to be quite hard work so first thing I want to do is not to be aggressive trying to be a buyer but I would like to be a seller particularly if we could come uh, out of this little area here back below that 99.20 area so you can see a nice a nice uh, ending pattern forming at the moment is the on the hourly chart 
and you can see if we get, if have a breakdown from that back below that 99.30 inside the previous structure I would like to look to be on the short side of that which which fits so that would fit with a seasonal pattern the dollar has been following its seasonal pattern particularly that midterm election pattern since the beginning of the year so whilst it continues to do that I will use the season, seasonal pattern for that on the flip side of that obviously if we're looking for weakness from the the, do the dollar uh, the obvious thing would be the for, for strength in the euro and look at the euro chart it is something I can see if we go super long term uh, I can see a particular a potential base here in the euro um, and a pattern and actually a move to the to the upside again in the euro but it's 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 struggling I'll look at the cot data in a second just to explain a little bit more detail but um, the chart suggests yes I, I thought it was possible we could see this move back to the, into these lows but it is on my list to be a buyer so again just like dropping down into the hourly chart if I can see a move in the euro back above of 109.40 I would be looking to be on the long side through through here it's something I don't want to be massively aggressive on say the seasonal pa pattern is a sh uh, short term just a couple of weeks through uh, through April it doesn't mean like the dollar doesn't have to turn around and collapse same with the euro it doesn't have to have a strong rally we may just consolidate here before actual further weakness in the euro um, what I would like to have seen um, from the euro in particular is uh, an in increase in buying I would like to have seen particularly the levels that we're at so we're looking at the the latest commitment of traders data here and bear in mind this is Thursday Thursday afternoon the next the new data will be out tomorrow um, so the picture may change a little bit so we may see that and that's why I want to do the video now to give you a heads up so you can check and do the research over the weekend to try to pl plan ahead with that info what I would like to have seen given the levels that the euro has got to we've been seeing a lot of uh, a pretty significant decline since 21 and we're at these levels back down to lows we haven't seen for quite a while um, previously if you've seen where we were in this area as we were back through here there was quite a significant incre increase in interest from the commercials there was certainly a lot of commercial buying in those periods so there was, there was interest there we got the pandemic in the middle but clearly there was interest going into that and eventually that's what f uh, followed through with regards to the euro we don't have that at the moment we've been up at fairly significant levels of buying but they've been stable but no I didn't see an increase I would like to have seen an increase over this last few weeks whilst we've been building this base and we're not seeing that um, so again that possibly suggests if we look at the chart go back to the daily chart again we may see a bit of a bounce in here uh, but it may not be that strong so we may push back in towards sort of the 111s we may consolidate in here we actually get into May whenever the turn seasonally bearish we possibly even see a continuation to the downside in here so I don't want to be massively aggressive and being long uh, but certainly I think uh, the downside is limited I think we're, uh, it's unlikely at the moment that we make a new low in here just here and now at this point so I will contemplate longs above that 109.40 um, but the cut data and the lack of buy at the moment unless something changes to, on tomorrow's data uh, suggests that we're not about to do that um, so any any longs that I take take will be short term. I'll look for conservative targets around that 111 area. Uh, if we break through, you'll try to scale in, but at the same time, it keeping stops close. So dollar short, euro uh, long, pound long is the other one that I like. Um, it is a I would have slight more preference to, uh, to pound over euro. And I'll explain it why and it's just in a second. We'll take a look at the cut data. Again, pounds do what it typically does. Whatever it makes a, the a base, it typically has this consolidation quite often. It actually has this little double bottoms or double tops whenever it makes uh, the tops to come down. It's quite often we see we see those kind of formations. I would be surprised if pound doesn't attempt to have a push. This little move that it's doing here is too uh, it's too tight. I would expect to see it push to the downside and then get a rejection where we typically see aggressive price action to the upside from buying it. It's, it's the nature of how it typically moves. Um, so I would like, before getting long, I would like to see it try to push down towards that 130 level and get a strong rejection and then start to follow through in it. Uh, this last few days consolidation would be less likely just to break to the upside but it's, it's possible but I would like to see it have that push to the downside and then look for that run up back up towards sort of 134 50 135 again like euro I don't see a huge move at the moment uh, coming in pound um, seasonally just like we talked about with regards to the dollar and the and the euro if we look at the pound seasonal pattern again it's following its pattern very well we see a lot of weakness um, in the early part of the year we're getting into this period now where historically April particularly this middle part is tend to be a sweet spot for for pound um, the beginning of the 
seasonal period, or the bullish seasonal period can actually uh, occur earlier and, and stronger years, but it's a weaker year. Um, and it, uh, the sweet spot generally isn't around sort of the 7th, 8th, 9th of, of April. So we're getting into that window, absolutely. And you can even see from the purple line again, focusing on the election cycle, there's actually a little double bottom in, in there on that election years. And that's what we're setting up for a higher low at the moment, potentially, uh, for moving higher. So next week, yes, going into next week, I would like to be a buyer, providing we do see structure, um, do what it's, we, we want it to do. Again, we'll take a look at the cut data to see if it's backed up. And the positive thing with Pound this time is it, is it actually is. Uh, it could be stronger, uh, the buying could be stronger in Pound on the commercial side, absolutely. But we do see an interest in here, there are commercial buyers covering over as they quite commonly do, adding to the shorts as well and that push higher, but we're seeing a big increase in the, in the longs. Um, again, new data out tomorrow I would really like to see the longs continue to push higher in tomorrow's release up towards that 200,000 level ideally I don't mind if the shorts come up a little bit that's, that's fine but the perfect scenario would be actually if they drop off um, but the key thing is that the level of buying to show that they, they see a need to hedge for, for a move from these levels that shows a limited downside uh, right here right now and protecting for that move move to the upside so again looking at the seasonal pattern it's not su super long we're just looking through this period towards it's typically around the sort of 29th 30th of, of april somewhere at that point um so a nice window of a couple of weeks and i think if we can push on the chart back up to around that 134.50 135 i think at the moment it's unlikely that we see a breakout off uh sort of the weekly channel that we're in but back up towards the top of that weekly channel uh, and we'll take it from there, but certainly bias from here is long. Um, where and when, say I would like to see a move to the downside, we may not get that, we may just see that, uh, a breakout from the current consolidation that we've been building on the, on, this, uh, on the hourly chart here, if we get a move back above 131, it's, it's possible, but we've seen a couple of failed attempts to the upside and we spike and come back uh, come back quite quickly so i'd like to see rather than see a failure of buyers that we've seen quite a lot i'd like to see a failure of sellers um and from that i would say if sellers could actually kick in and get rejected from these low, lower levels that'd be a much easier buy and i think we'd see a much stronger acceleration to the upside so it's on the list same as the euro may not happen today or tomorrow could be the beginning of next week and that's fine that takes us right into the the, the sweet spot for that seasonal period so dollar dollar weakness euro strength uh, pound strength in particular the key key factor in there just following the, the dollar index chart is this a field breakout if we can get this the the dollar index to break out of that sort of rising wage pattern that we have and back below that 99.30 uh that would be the catalyst and i would ima I'd imagine quite a few markets would would take uh, kick in quite nicely from that the last one i want to leave on is the equity markets uh, we've had a real nice move through through march and again i'll go back to the the seasonal patterns um and again they're following more closely aligned with their the election cycle the purple line we've had a certainly a lot of weakness at the beginning of the year uh they actually outperformed it in february beginning of march typically quite strong we're in this period now from a peak a lot of people you'll see referring to april being a really really strong period for equities and historically it is but if you look at the purple line it's, it tends to be less so and we tend to head in towards the summer where we start to see weakness and i do expect weakness in equities um so uh, I, I think we can go up further from where we currently are but as we get to the latter part of, of april into may uh if we're pushing towards new highs i think this uh, is probably coming towards the end of that i do expect to see further weakness could get quite ugly as we get into the summer um and that's fine but uh, typically in mid-term election years it's the 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 core last quarter is typically where we see the majority of the gains so i still want to be long but bear in mind uh, april generally isn't as strong as it historically is uh, we could consolidate around here you see you don't see uh, strength until about the middle of the, the month so we go back to the, the actual s p chart we've had a little field breakout above here we come back into retest don't mind this nice little corrective pattern there's nothing aggressive in here it does look corrective which suggests there is still more upside but it might take a couple of days uh, in this area um there's a possibility a bit like some of the charts we've looked at a bit like the pound chart you can see on the hourly here on the S&P again it looks possibly building a base I'm not expecting a break above this today above 44 say 45 um, I'm not expecting a break above that today if it comes fine I would look to be on the long side 
uh, but I think there's the likelihood that we've got more downside in this. The key thing for me with regards to the S&P, which I'll use as a barometer for equities in general, is that it does stay above 44. Um, I'd rather it didn't break below that 44 area, it takes the, the shine off. In terms of being on the on the long side, uh, that would certainly be the point where you want to switch to, to the short side. But at the moment we're correcting, we're getting into an area where we could see a bounce. We have the monthly pivot, we've got the moving averages in here, uh, 44. 44.15 is coming off a nice level through here as well. So we've got a nice zone. Let's say 44 is the line in it, 4400 is the line in the sand for me. Stay above that point. So I expect to see further downside today. Later in the session, we may see buyers coming back in. That could be the, the, the catalyst for it uh, with a follow through then to tomorrow and again into the next week. But I do see us going higher from here. It's just a matter of timing that. I, th I don't think it's today. I don't think it's from the open today. Uh, we could consolidate here for a few days and actually maybe middle of next week before we actually see some upside. Um, I don't see us taking out, making out new highs, but whether we do or not, I don't really mind whether we get to here or get to here, it doesn't matter. Key thing is actually get, getting into the latter part of the month, into April, and closer to summer, I do see weakness, and I, I, I could get quite quite ugly later in, uh, through the summer. Um, but that's fine. Uh, I'd be looking to. I'd keep some cash at hand. I would like to buy some some stocks. If we do see uh, some weakness towards the through the summer, then buying towards the end of the summer would be the key point. Well, obviously, I'll do another video closer to that point, and if we get, if we start to see that, I'll try to time that move. But at the moment, focus on what we currently have. April still should see some upside. Price action is corrective, which suggests the, the main direction is still to the upside. But the key thing is staying above 44 and trying to time that. We may be a few days away from it yet, um, but let's see what we do to this afternoon. I think we should open lower, um, but let's see how quickly buyers come in. If you want to uh, update or more regular update than rather than just the, the YouTube videos, by all means, jump, uh, jump on to our live stream every Monday night. I'll be talking about these uh, these markets and, and others in more detail on Monday. Uh, so you 8 p.m. UK time, jump on there. We'll be going through those. We'll take a look at the latest cut data, whatever we get tomorrow, tomorrow night. Uh, through that and see how the charts are are evolving along so by all means yeah jump jump onto that take a look or even just check out the cot data yourself that's uh, when it's updated released tomorrow so that's it guys that's the main there's quite a few other markets i've got my eye on but those four in particular i can see what they're doing i can see the path that they're following they're following the seasonal patterns and as long as they continue to do so i'll continue to act on them and continue to follow those paths that they are that they are on so um, try to avoid what the noise is around you following news and what's going on in the world focus what's on the charts and let the chart dictate to you what the markets are doing and those four in particular as i say uh, they are doing what they should be doing and it's what they would want them to be doing so um, i can't ask for more than that